Hi, this is Rashid. Welcome to another video. Um, the topic of CMOS transistor operation is um, is going on, and I really hope that you are following me here. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions you have. And today we are going to talk about another very important thing, and that thing is. Okay, I already explained the linear and saturation. So question is, where we want transistor to operate? Here to here. Uh, so the answer is the digital folks, uh, digital IC designers, they want transistor to operate in linear region. But the analog folks, they want transistor to operate mostly in the saturation region. Question is why? Okay, so that is what I'm going to cover here. I'll get back. So this is your linear region. I just redraw uh, what, what I had before, but in into different region. And this is the picture in saturation. So again, uh, um, linear region operation, your source is grounded. Uh, you apply gate source, gate to source volt has to be greater than VT, so that strong inversion happens. And as we increase beyond VT, uh, we start having um, a good amount of electron and with a little bit of pull from VDS, we have current start flowing. Electron in this direction, current on this direction. And as long as VDS, the voltage here is less than VD sad, which is VGS minus VT. As long as less than that, we have a nice current flows. Eventually we reach saturation, this depletion region gets bigger, VDS gets higher, and the pinch off happens, but at that time we have such a strong flow of electron flow, such a strong flow of electrons. Um, in this region, there's a strong pulse electrons move over on this side. So, and we have nearly constant current flows doesn't matter what's the value of VDS. VDS we can change, but current doesn't change. So it's a, a very good current source at that moment. In order to, we will get to these equations. Um, don't worry about those for now. But for digital folks, why for them it matters that transistor is uh, stays in the linear region? Okay, let's look at. In the digital uh, design in the digital domain we are only dealing with zero and one so our signals and and different nodes at different nodes within the network um, and there is a this is a network I come to that in a minute but the waveforms are zero and one zero is the lowest voltage zero volt one is I'm picking 1.8 volt which was the the voltage uh, supported on Intel 180 nanometer. So 1.8 volt. So signal goes from 0 and 1.8. Now there's a little bit delay. It doesn't go abruptly to 1.8. But that's all the nodes going to be in our network. So in this case, this is, um, I know I haven't told you about NMOS, uh, sorry, PMOS. We only talk about NMOS, but it's important to look at this circuit. And what happens? So First of all, the NMOS, that the beautiful NMOS that you have seen here, it's not possible to draw that in a circuit, right? So instead, we have this notation. So we put this, and then we put one line here. So this represents gate. Yeah, this is gate of NMOS. This is drain, and this is source. So you remember, source is connected to ground. The bulk we are not showing, but bulk, um, this one over here, we are assuming that it's connected to ground here too. Bulk and source are together. So normally bulk is not shown, especially in the digital circuits. And then gate, here we will apply the input voltage. This one, zero to one, zero to one. And then we have another mass. This is similar, but the only difference you see there's a bubble here. And it's a PMOS. 
we studied about n mass what what is p mass so we will get to that in the next video most likely but let's hold on there just assume there's another p mass and it is very good connecting to vdd so what happens is for maybe it's a good idea that you know the p mass and n mass higher level so for p mass this is source and source in p mass is connected to supply voltage n mass is connected to ground that's the difference between p mass and n mass then we have a bubble here where i already explained the rest of the things are same this is source this is drain this is gate we are connecting these two inputs together and we will apply input voltage which is blue here so initially it's at zero p mass i will get to those and uh, get to that in the next video works totally opposite to n mass so for p mass remember when input is zero p mass turns on and p mass is not electron these are holes we get to that do not want to confuse you but think of that when input is zero p mass turns on or zero volt so when it turns on what's what the circuit looks like I should pick a different one. Sorry. It's turned on. So this thing is connected to this. And N MOS is not on. Well, you know that when the gate voltage is zero volt, it hasn't gone beyond VT. Right? So this gate will not turn on. So what happens is um this one is open. So this is P mass, which is now in on mode, and N mass is in off mode. Mm, should I do this? Yeah, maybe. Okay. This is connected to VCC, sorry, I called it VDD, so let's turn. This is supply voltage. This is where we are applying input VN, which is this blue. So when VN is, I should say here, this is zero. We are at this. What happens? This channel is connected and keep in mind our output the we are taking a wire from here this point this node which is a common node which in this case is here right okay what happens to output now? You are electrical engineering students or engineers so this node is connected directly to VCC. So output is VD or 1.8 volt or we say logic 1. Input is at logic 0. So again, when input is 0, output is 1. Am I clear? NP must work now look at another scenario now it makes a transition and now input is high 1.8 volt what happens now when input is high p mass is off and n mass is turns on so what happens now it's same circuit And what's the change now? What change is that we have P mass is off and mass turns on. We need to change everything. Let's 
So we get a input now is 1.8 volt or logic high. And now this node, which is connected to VCC, right after when this is on, this was initially at VD 1.8 volt, but now it has a path to ground. So initially it starts at 1.8 volt and then start very quickly ground goes to ground so voltage becomes zero eventually start with 1.8 volt but then become zero so in steady state i mean after a little while what happens v out becomes zero volt or logic low so because nmos is active now so what do you see two things pmos gets on when input is zero nmos gets on when input is one but the nature of this device is when input is zero output is one when n input is one output is zero so nmos is good for nmos is used to provide a ground path pmos is used to provide a supply path understand so what happens overall this circuit is becoming an inverter it inverts the input but what really is important, what I really wanted to tell you um, in, in explaining the transistor operation so far, what I assumed that always, okay, initially there is no voltage. And as we increase voltage, there's no voltage as we increase the voltage. So that is true because we are going from 0 to 1.8 volt. Very quickly, we will settle at 1.8 volt here. This is that's a transition time, very small. And once we settle at 1.8 volt, what is going to happen? It's already more than the threshold voltage. So great. So transistor inversion layer is formed in the channel. But what is the scenario on the D? Initially, and that is really important. Pay attention to this one, please. Initially, D, because PMOS was on previously, D was at VDD at 1.8 volt. I mean, in the example that I gave, I said, okay, we let's start increasing the voltage. But actually, the, in the real circuit, when we use it, we don't increase the voltage. The voltage starts at a very high value and then goes down. And what happens when the VD is at a very the highest voltage? It's definitely greater than the VD sad. So transistor is in saturation. So NMOS is typically start not in the cutoff but actually in saturation and this since it as transistor is on there's a path to it and it's grounded so very quickly this voltage here becomes zero and now vg is still high 1.8 volts so what region is that can you guess that it's definitely not saturation it's not cut off because vgs is 1.8 volt so it's linear region so in steady state i mean it stays on this for a little while just makes changes then it stays on a line so you see that for both pmos and nmos transistor remains in a linear region and voltage doesn't change here so current remains kind of kind of fixed once the vds uh, is settled so you see the point that's why we say for the digital guys because they they, they want the the region to to stay in saturation they don't want in that because they don't want any amplification of that all they want input to make transition between 0 1.8 volt output between 0 and 1.8 volt they don't want this transistor to become an amplifier or to provide a gain or to have a lot of current suddenly flowing based on the input they don't want that 